Hello, we are continuing uh, with our series on the national education policy. And today we're going to be talking in this episode about what is the NEP saying where pedagogy is concerned? How is it that they are asking us what is the expectation of teachers in the classrooms uh, when you are transacting the curriculum? Once again, we begin with our familiar framework with the content, pedagogy and assessment. And since it's a cycle, we, we've got the opportunity to go back. And because it's formative assessment, we're going to focus on pedagogy. So what NEP is really calling out is competency-based teaching. Now, competency, as we know, are skills. You might have also heard and seen the document on learning objectives, which is already out, the LOs. And we're guessing that the uh, when they finally come out with the document of the learning standards, as has been mentioned, that they would be establishing parak, parak within the NEP 2020 format. They are saying that we would be having something which is one body, which would be looking at learning standards. And what would these learning standards be? Most probably they would be drawn out of the learning objectives, which are already in place. And those are nothing but competencies. Learner will be able to, as we know. They are also looking at, can we integrate all the subjects? And we've talked about this earlier. And integration of subjects, one clear pedagogy for that is interdisciplinary project-based teaching. We will touch upon that in future episodes. No separation of subjects. That means there are no silos. Multilingual teaching, which has been addressed earlier, by us, and you must have read a lot about this as well. Experiential learning. Again, uh, it's been widely un you know, misunderstood. What is experiential learning? It doesn't mean you have to already always go outdoors and do rock climbing and rappling and river rafting for it to be qualifying as experiential learning. Most importantly, experiential learning is that learning which from an experience, through an experience, you gain something and you're able to reflect on it. So experiential learning, even within the classroom, integration of technology, of course, developmental, uh, development of a scientific tempo, curiosity, inquiry-based learning as we know it, promoting students' questions, very important. And this has been called out. That's the, fun, that's the nice part. Otherwise, in our classroom, all the questions are asked by the teacher, and the children raise their hands in chorus answers. But can we encourage questions from students? And that's what will get them to think. There is an emphasis on constitutional values. And I have mentioned this even in the first introductory episode of this entire series on the NEP 2020. Now, what do they mean by integration of subjects? So we are recommending project-based learning for integration of subjects. And then, of course, you have to integrate the arts, integrate sports, ICT, also bring in some storytelling. Every teacher should also be a storyteller. In the no separation of subjects category, they're talking about students should be able to choose between science and humanities together. Let them take academic and vocational and no separation of curricular and co-curricular. This is a good news. Otherwise, co-curricular is relegated to the back burner. Nobody really cares, or cares about that. In multilingual teaching, the idea behind encouraging multilingual teaching is that it can then become collaborative, interactive, and probably when you use the vernacular, which the student is comfortable with, there could be deeper learning, deeper imbibing of concepts which will happen. So how does this really look in our classrooms? So once again, what NEP is suggesting is include experiential learning, inquiry-driven learning, higher order thinking, integrated learning. There is something very, very remarkable in the document and something that we all should be moving towards gradually, slowly, passing on the responsibility of the learning to our students, slow and gradual release of responsibility. They're talking about helping our students to learn metacognition skills, self-regulation skills, metacognition. Cognition is thinking. Metacognition, when you're thinking about your thoughts, why are you thinking like this? Can you change it? Can you think about it in a different way? 
And that should automatically lead to regulating your own thoughts and therefore regulating your own learning. This is a big thing which NEP is called out. How can we start this practice right away? We don't have to wait for the new textbooks to arrive. We're suggesting project-based learning as one pedagogical practice to be adopted in all our classrooms. Now, project-based learning is not the same as doing a project. Project-based learning is a pedagogical strategy. Doing a project is something which happens once the teaching is over. It's not the same. So let's understand some key understandings of PBL. It allows us or allows our students to approach a problem. It's usually something through which we solve a problem. And which is why no problem in life is solved through one subject. And therefore, integrating of all the subjects is a great idea. Tinkering with ideas, information, techniques, building different perspectives. If we can help our students engage with this approach early enough, they will find it easy to solve problems and make decisions later on in life. Once we put them under PBL pedagogy, and we'll talk a little bit more about it in the next couple of slides, they will gain the 21st century skills of critical thinking, creative thinking, tolerance to ambiguity of ideas, a recognition of bias, separating fact from fallacy, and putting your biases away, and therefore encouraging rational thought, as well as an appreciation of ethical concerns. All of this has been called out in the document, NEP 2020. Let's take one example for PBL. So how do you think in pedagogy? How do you encourage thinking, higher order thinking, as mentioned previously? I've taken an example of sound, which otherwise fits into a physics textbooks, but we'll show you how it can pan out for all the subjects. We need to begin with these three ideas where PBL is concerned. Number one, we need to have a challenging question. For example, how does sound impact our lives is my question today. We need to have an end goal for why are we putting the students through PBL. We need to be justifying whatever we are doing. So we need to do this. My idea of an end goal is I would like my students to understand the interconnectedness of all the disciplines whenever you're trying to find a solution to anything in life. At the end of PBL, we should see whether the students can create a product, a journal, a report, anything which is tangible. Let's look at this idea of sound and how does it show up when we want to integrate all the subjects. I can begin with a soundless world because remember, ethical and moral development has been called out. So respecting those who cannot hear, just a general idea on one slide. The physics of sound, which is something that they will be doing anyway. Transmission of sound, sound waves, echoes, overtones. We all go and shout whenever we visit hill stations. The biology of sound, that means how is sound heard? The structure of the human ear, the nerves, the brain, the hearing range of animals maybe. Environmental sound, sounds of nature, beautiful and pleasant. Sound pollution. Decibel range, comparison, schools, factories, playgrounds, roads, libraries, places of worship with a sound meter possibly. Okay. Innovation with sounds, creating models of a voice box, creating simple instruments, and then the music itself. Okay. So learning to play an instrument also could be an end result. What are the effects of the different musical, let's say, rhythm, tune, ragas, morning rag, afternoon rag? What are the effects on moods? What is the difference between harmony and cacophony and so on? I could take so many more, but with one slide, this was just to give you an idea of how a PBL will actually pan out. And how does it include all the higher order thinking skills when we are doing this integrating of disciplines through PBL to map to the National Education Policy 2020. Next time, we will be talking about what are what is the document saying about assessment and how can we make it authentic? Do like and do subscribe to our channel and in the chat box and in the interactive box, please put in your comments of what do you think would be the change expected in assessment practices? We'd love to hear from you. 
Till the next time.